Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. It's another busy, busy night. We've been slammed ever since we got back from the whole road trip. So right now I'm working on this M5. Uh, pretty much what's going on with this car. I've worked on it before, I've done a few maintenance items, but he's been experiencing a lot of battery drain. Uh, he gets the warning on the dash as well, and the battery pretty much kills itself overnight. So I'm just uh, diagnosing what the uh, battery drain is coming from. On the E60, it's very common if you have the comfort access system that sometimes some of the door modules just get stuck or something happens to the module itself which starts drawing a lot of current even when the car's off. Another common issue with any car with like the remote start with the actual remote push button start, that's what I meant to say, is if you're parking in your garage and you leave your key close enough that the car still detects it, it's not going to have enough like distance in order for the car to go to sleep. And if the car doesn't go to sleep with all these newer cars, all the modules that are in there, they actually do take up a lot of current. So it will cause the battery to fail as well. Another issue could be alternator, could be the IBS system, or it could just be the battery itself. But he has replaced the battery recently. He even had it replaced again under warranty. So I'm almost positive it's not the battery. But anyways, like any of these newer cars, I highly recommend if you ever have to get a battery uh, from the, you know, after you have to change it the first time, definitely get an AGM battery. It lasts a lot longer, it has a lot more output. So definitely consider getting AGM. It's a little bit more expensive, but you get that in return by how much longer it lasts. All right, so I finally figured out the battery drain on the M5. It actually was the headlight switch. So there's a dimmer switch right here on the side of the headlight switch, and that dimmer switch was completely messed up. Um, the gear that's on there that drives the actual switch itself was stripped or whatnot. And since we can't find one of those locally right now, and uh, a new one's like 190 bucks, I believe, I went ahead and just repaired that one for now. I took it completely apart, the whole switch, uh, fixed the gear as best as I could, and then I put everything back together and now the battery draw is pretty much completely gone. But because of that battery draw, even though that they replaced the battery, their battery that was in here is an interstate battery, it's not an AGM, it is uh, already very weak. So I put in an AGM battery that I have as my you know repair battery. And I have that in the car right now to check all of the draw and make sure everything is you know fixed completely. And while that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and charge up their interstate battery right here and hopefully they do have warranty on it so hopefully this should last them until they can get it replaced under warranty but anyways m5 is good to go and there is a air leak on this back driver tire so i'm going to fill that up and i already told them about that so hopefully they'll get that fixed soon too so i just pulled in this 6 series it is a 650i uh, it's got a bunch of issues a bunch of check engine lights and um, pretty much we just got to get it ready for smog but in order to do some of those things, we do have to do a little bit of maintenance while we're at it as well. So we're going to be changing the valve cover gasket, spark plugs, uh, cam sensors, any vacuum lines that I see that are torn, any other sensors like the eccentric shaft sensor, uh, all those seals, we're just going to knock all that out. And um, since this is 650, it is a little bit difficult to do those valve cover gaskets. I've got a video on a 550 that I did on my main channel at the DIY. So if you guys have uh, a similar car with the same motor, make sure you go check that out. But anyways. Let me go and start getting to it.
Guys, look who decided to join us. It's a uh, possum, maybe? I have no idea. What do you think it is? I have no clue. No, it's not a rat or a mouse. Oh my god, it's so cute! Let me go try to touch it? No! First research what it is. I don't know, we had the door open. I don't know if he just like came in. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what's going on. Possibly. But it probably has a mom. Uh huh. It looks little. Awesome. How are we gonna get him out, for real? I have no clue. Ask Google. It's possum drama. It's cause babe, we're awesome like... No wait, what was the song? Awesome like a possum. Yeah, I'm awesome like a possum. They run, growl, belch, urinate, and defecate. It's a creepy looking tail too. It's not like a rat tail. Oh, hell no. Uh -uh. Why is it looking at me like that? Oh, it's so cute. I'm surprised Fluffy didn't see it. Fluffy was out inside. Yeah, well, he was in here. Out here. Yep. All right, well, we have no idea how to get out of here. Let's see. How to get awesome out of the All right, so I'm just finishing up on this six series. We did have to wait for parts of uh, some more gaskets and sensors, but we've got everything now. So now we're just buttoning everything up. I also changed out those upper timing cover uh, gaskets on both sides and just finishing up the rest of the valve cover job and also change all those plugs out. Every seal gasket that I have access to while I'm in here, I'm changing. Only thing that we are not changing this time is the alternator bracket gasket, which is a very common oil leak source on these uh, V8s. Uh, this is an N62. And even some of the newer variants, they still have these issues. And the main reason we're not doing that is because we're trying to get this car to pass smog first. And it does have a timing related code, but I don't see any like timing issues right off the bat. More than likely, I'm pretty sure it was just a sensor issue as well as a, a small misfire and a couple of vacuum leaks. But we've got all that squared away now. Once everything's put back together, we'll drive it around, just make sure everything gets ready. <laughs> you said but. Okay. But, but, but. <laughs> Once everything is put back together, we'll drive it around, uh, make sure all the monitors are ready, no error lights, and then if he wants to come back later and do that alternator bracket gasket, which is a pretty big job, and we'll just knock out a lot of other maintenance at the same time. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of dirt because I'm trying to clean all these items as I go. I mean, there's just so much crud. I mean, you can look at it on here. This is the vacuum pump for the brake. I mean, just look at that. It's just ridiculous. But like I said, we're changing all these gaskets, O-rings, whatever I can find. Even if they look okay, I'm just changing them anyway since we're already here. And I'm also going to clean out both van or all four vanos solenoids. So I'll actuate them, get those cleaned up real nice. And we are putting all new cam sensors in here. It's got all new spark plug tube seals. Uh, we are not changing the ignition coils, we're just going to leave those for now. But yeah, so all these parts I'm cleaning them up as I go, which is why I've got them laid out the way I do. So how much was all this in parts? Parts alone, I think we're pushing around 800, 900 with some of the, actually probably even more than that now because of all the cam sensors. All right, so I just finished putting pretty much the whole motor and everything back together. I put the air box in for now so I can hook up the MAF sensor, but everything is plugged in. Uh, we're just missing like the cabin filter assembly, the strut bar, the cover for the motor, but that's not a big deal. I went ahead and erased all of the fault codes and we should be good to go. Um, I'm gonna prime the system a little bit so all the fuel goes in since we did since we did disconnect that fuel line. So as soon as we have everything primed, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do the first start. Hopefully everything's good. I went ahead and cleaned up the whole area in front of it because since we did do the valve covers, I'm sure there's a lot of oil that leaked onto the manifolds. So as soon as I get it to turn on and uh, it warms up just enough, I'm gonna pull the car out. That way it'll smoke all that stuff that's on the manifolds outside instead of you know making the whole shop smell like burnt oil. Wait, let's try it, see what happens.
there we go. It's smoking quite a bit. But that should die down pretty quickly here. But anyways, so the 650 is pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna put the covers and all that back on. I'll do a little test drive, make sure that you know there's no other fault codes popping up. But besides that, we should be good. No beamer when I pull in the sun. Change on me just like Polo to die. Don't be fronting, girl, you know I'm the one. I'm a two is not an option, and they know they can't stop me. Take off, take off, I can't take no. 